gigantic webinar series uh, on the Entropus web usage. Uh, this one is a pretty special one because we can use that for teaching our customers on how to use the Entropus web. The Entropus web itself has been around for a very long time. We came out in version uh, 6 and then changed into the Entropus of version 7, which had a black, darker background. Uh, and if you went to version 8, we have now a lighter uh, bluish color uh, background. So that's how we differentiate the web if you have the older one or the new one. But rest assured, you're not learning a new product when you migrate, right? It is still the same features. There are more features, obviously. They're better designed. We listened to what you guys liked and didn't like, and we made it even better on the new Entropass web. So on the Entropass web, it's pretty easy to download. You have to go to the link of the customer. So for example, 127.0.0.1, or for example, demo.cantech.com. I'm gonna show you guys in a second. All right. And if you go to demo.cantech.com, which is my server, this is what I house, host the demo, my demo server, you can download the application. If you have your own uh, uh, Enterprise Web, or you're working in, in Hatrix or, or Cloud or anything, you go to that link and you download the Enterprise Web for that Hatrix platform or your own platform. It can be your IP address, it can be a domain name. Obviously, it's encrypted, and, and making it encrypted is better, so you better provide, it's best to provide an encryption Enterprise Web. Once you've downloaded, you install a little package, and then you can log in. One of the cool things with the Enterprise Web is it's a multi-server environment. A lot of you guys have been asking for us, guys, I want to have the ability to log into multiple servers at the same time. Well, at the same time is hard, but we can do it off one interface. We can have one interface, and I have here five different servers. I have my most recent uh, favorite, and then I have all my servers, and I could search for them. So the benefit I could add multiple so as a tech, I can have customer A, customer B, customer C. I have a customer in, in Toronto, he has two Cantex servers. He wants to keep two Cantex servers and he wants to manage them from one computer. So he has two login buttons. He presses uh, Office A, Office B, totally separate instances of the Cantex system. So when I hit the connect button, so once I get to this page here, I'm already connected to my Enterprise system. This login will only appear if a connection is established. It's not logged in yet, but it sees the system, which is a good thing. So now I type in my super secure password and I can log in to my Enterprise system. All right. Once I log in, in this case, I get a pop-up. This pop-up is telling me that this is a training database. One of the benefits, the system administrator can send notifications to you. So once you log in, you get a pop-up. Don't forget, it's a holiday. Don't forget, we're doing an update. So they can advise you uh, specifically about a bunch of things. And you press OK, and you're in. Now, my page loaded at the card window. So this is the tabs that I have up here. So I have the card holder window. Your page may load somewhere else. One of the benefits of the Enterprise Web is that it will remember the last tabs you have opened, the last windows you have opened. So when you close your interface and you log back in, it will load it exactly the way you have. The content will be uh, different, but you're gonna have, like, meaning the page will refresh with new users, obviously, but it will be at the card window. So if I left it on the door window, I get back in, it's back in the door window. So once I click on the card holder window, for example, I get to see all my cards. And if I click on my Mr. Peter here, I can see his picture if he had one and all his other information. I can right click, so any of the black columns here, I can right click and I can add extra columns to best view and describe his uh, windows. I could see what extra information he has. And I added a few extra items. 
I could also remove whatever is not important to me. Furthermore, I can right click on a particular user like Mr. Peter and hit edit or copy them or even view the last transactions. So this will give me the ability of seeing lately where he's been. Oh, he hasn't been anywhere because he's only been modified, right? Whereas if I take another card, Mr. Regular card, and I view last transactions, I get to see all the last few doors he's been to. So I can quickly see if he showed up to work today. Today he did not show up to work. Hmm, interesting, right? From here, what I could also do is I can add a card if I want. Now, one thing to mention at the very top are all our menus. So I can add various menus on top here. I can add, uh, I could edit, and, and so on. So the right click allows you to do all the actions here, and I could add. Let's go add a new person. When I hit the add new person, I can go and enter his name. Bob Smith, right? And then I enter his card number, for example, 22 colon 12345. Like we entered in EntryPass, like the card is seen on the card. Your card may look a bit different than this. It's okay. You enter it like you see it on the card, like you were trained to show it. And then you could put a, you could put up to five cards per user. You could put their email. You could even take their picture if you want. It will use any camera available on that computer, or you can import a JPEG. Also, on the bottom here, I have my options. On the left, I can choose my access level, and then for every site that I have, I can give you an access. So for building one, I'm giving you access to the admin. For building two, I can give you always valid and so on. One of the advantages, I can click on the little arrow right here and give you more access and give you additional access levels. So each card holder, depending on the controller you have, may have more access per site. So I could give you admin access, and then I can add you, for example, uh, IT visitor access, and so on and so forth. And then I save the card holder. Did you guys notice one thing, though? I never changed tabs. I never changed menus, right? And when I loaded the add card window, I went and added the name, the card number. I could have entered his email and personal information here. And then I went straight to the access levels. So we've designed a window that to, the, to have the least possible clicks to get a card up and going. At the very top, which is the darker section, in every window, this means these are the most important information you have to enter for a card holder. Or, or any menu, for a door, for a schedule, and so on. And at the bottom is all the options. But we try to keep it simple that, you know, 99% of the people need this. All the extra options, like start date and end date and pin number, yes, they're important, right? But they're not uh, uh, required. So I press save. And now once I press save, it will save the particular person if I ever wanted to, okay? Now I can also, if I see back to my card window here, I can change my card grid if I want and see my cards separately uh, like this. So I could see them in, in tiles. Very practical when you have pictures, you can see little pictures of the people in a bit bigger if I ever wanted to. Under my events, I can see my events and my transactions that are occurring on my controller as they happen. And if the person has a picture, the picture will show up on the screen. Now what we've done in most cases, we've added the right click behavior, which allows me to display a user or, or display the, the door, for example. So on access granted, uh, on card trace, you can go into the user. Some of them don't bring you anywhere because they don't exist, but most of them bring you to a specific menu. So we took the right-click part of the events and we added them to the system, all right? So 
I'm going to jump here to operations. Now, under operations, we get to see everything. So we kind of took a different route here. Our operations are our, our doors, basically. If you want to unlock a door, you go to operations. If you want to activate a relay, you go to operations because those are actions. As a customer, you don't really care if it's a door or a relay or an input. It's a component. You could do an action for it. Now, uh, by default, you get to see everything. But in the drop downs, you can specify what you want to see. I want to see building A, for example. So I can sort always by building, always on the top here. Same thing here, I could search. If I'm looking for a particular door, I can search for that particular door if I ever wanted to. Now, if I also don't want, imagine I have a lot of doors here. I can, I say, I don't, I don't want to see all my doors, all my components, I just want to see doors. I get to see my doors in my system. Let me pick all my sites for now. Notice that I have some gray doors. These doors are not communicating, they're offline. Some doors are now black here. And if I do a door first open, the door will change. The door changes state and becomes a red door, advising me an alarm. So I get a visual status of what's going on. Red means locked. Red means, uh, sorry, black means locked. Red means uh, in alarm. And green means unlocked. And then there's open and close and so on. Now, if you have no idea what these icons mean, you could always hit the little find uh, button here, the magnifying glass, and it will tell you exactly what the status of the door is. I can right click on a particular door and perform various actions. I can unlock a door. So now the door is unlocked to the public. And um, as, as you can see here, the door unlocks and the door becomes green. Now when I open it, it won't cause an alarm but the door will physically open. So I know if the, part, the door is physically open or closed, right? From here, uh, I can also perform other actions like uh, lock or unlock, and these are similar to the ones on the workstation. We have also can watch videos. So if I've tied my camera to a door, I can say, show me that camera. Okay. So basically, I could tie a camera to a door and I can display the live video that pops up directly on that particular camera. Now, something that I really like, and it's a very popular feature, is the, uh, uh, the schedule change that we put in the system. The, which we put, yeah, the clear schedule here and set schedule. So a lot of our doors have schedules and a lot of us are working from home now. So now, what are we gonna do? We gotta go change the schedule for these doors. How do I fix this schedule for the doors without um, uh, calling my integrator? Because I gotta call my integrator, you have to show up, change all the schedules. Uh, you, need, you need full access to change the schedule. So what we've done in the door menu, we just simply right click, and now we can change the schedule straight from the window here. So now I can change the schedule that I want. It had not door Monday to Friday. Now I could put this particular schedule and save it. Without having to have full rights, I can change my door schedule programming directly from the operations menu. I find that pretty cool. Also, you can do multi-selection by hitting the control button. I find that pretty cool. Rob, is it exciting for you? Yes. I am loving this. Exactly. So we get a clear visual status. The icons are big, clear. Uh, you could see that they're, what they're doing. And again, if you don't understand, hit the uh, magnifying glass. It will tell you in text exactly what all this means for that particular door. Uh, something that was added, so reports are, are something that are very powerful here. And there are four types of reports. Now, Robson asked me, Tom, uh, so you said there's four, but I only see three reports. Right. So basically, there's a fourth report called the custom report. There's quick reports, cardholder reports, and component reports. And the fourth one is called the custom report. These two reports are generically available with the Enterprise web. 
The fourth report is built in the Cantic workstation, all right, and then made available on the web. So these are more customizable reports that once they are built, they can be made available on the Enterprise web, and then you can use them. I particularly didn't uh, add any, so I don't have them here because some could be sensitive. No, no, it's only available from the workstation. I don't want this to be available from the web, for example. Let's go run a quick report. A quick report is what kind of, it's very simple. It's a four-step process, and one of them is waiting, and the last one is the finished one. So I specify, do I want all my events? No, no, I only want my access events. So I specify what kind of categories of events. We give you 10, 15 categories. You get to choose the category you want. And then I specify the intervals, for example. I could specify a custom time frame, or I could just quickly say uh, from four choices here. Most likely you're going back 24 hours for uh, three days and so on, right? If you want something custom, you have a calendar, click on all the little buttons and pick whatever you want. And then do you want everything, or do you want it only for bad stuff or only for good stuff, like depending on what you're looking for? If you're doing a, a, an access event report, then the normal stuff is good, whereas normal abnormal is the um, everything. I press next, so that was easy. And then I can, remember the black text box here? I can add columns. This is a huge add-on where the workstation people, or you people who use the workstation always ask us, I want to report and I want to know who the manager is. And, and his employee number, and I want to know a bunch of other information. Now we can add all this information in the report. So not only do I get an access granted report, but I also get a, a, a information on the card holder. So when I export this afterwards, I can now sort it, I could do whatever I want in Excel or whatever I use as a tool. A very, very popular report that people really like to use and add columns here, all right? And then if I want, I can filter by adding uh, card types or filter by name, filter by card number, and a bunch of other information in here. I could also specify that I don't want all doors. So for example, give me all this information on the card holder that are, not, or that are visitors that tried going to the server room. Why was a visitor trying to go in a server room, for example, right? Then I press next. This is where I wait a few seconds. It's it, depending on how complex your report, it may take a few seconds, right? And then poop, the report shows up automatically on the screen here. I have my access denied. Right, I can have multiple information. And if I did have, these are not program cards, but if I had program cards that were swiped from previous, I would see all the information here also. I can export an Excel file and save it locally, and I can save it in a PDF file. All right? And or I could just press finish and be done with it. Now, one thing to mention, this interface is available for Windows and Mac. The only thing is you cannot export in PDF in a Mac OS. You can view the report, you can make an Excel file, or in step number one, we can email you a PDF. There's a checkbox there for emailing, and it will email you the report automatically from your Enterprise system if you're using a Mac OS. So now we're done for the reports. So those are just a few of the things that it does. Uh, it does also program something called an action scheduler, which I'll show you in a second. It does do more uh, operational stuff, administrative things, such as access levels, schedules, and holidays. Things you probably are more administrative based, but you're gonna run once in a while, but you can definitely do that, right? Uh, you could program your operators, and if you are an installer, you can program your hardware programming. And one thing I like about the hardware programming is that when I click on a particular menu, it actually loads everything. I clicked on building A 
and he loaded everything for me. I get to see my entire site, my entire programming, as much as I can, obviously, within, within reason, in one shot. The trick is, is if you have one controller and one connection, it loads everything for you. It will, it will stop where there's multiple of, let's see if we're unlucky, so they're all one for one. I get to see everything, but at least I get to see a grid view of what's going on. Makes my life a lot easier when I'm actually uh, adding a controller or editing. If I want to edit a door, I could just double click on the door and uh, see the door from here. All right. Now, let's go back to, for example, our card holders. So far, I'm in the card holder window and I'm editing Mr. Peter Peterson here. Little example. And I'm in the process of changing random things. And my boss calls me emergency right away. Tom, you have to lock the doors. Tom, right away, you got to lock all these doors. Yeah, but I'm in the middle of programming somebody, right? And and, and I got to type all these things for him. What do I do? If I press save, he's halfway programmed. It might not let me save because I'm missing information, right? If I press cancel, I got to start all over again. It's a lot of work for me. Something that's really cool with the Enterprise web is that you have tabs. There's a little plus here. And you could open up a secondary tab, like your browser, and then go to your opera and load the operation screen. So now not only do you have your card window still open, but now you have your operation screen still open. And then no problem. One second, right click, lock the door, and the door locks right away. Now you can go and return back to your edit window for the card holder. You never left it. It never saved. It just moved to another tab, like a browser does, right? Now we have tabs inside the Enterprise web. Personally, I really like this feature because it allows me to work more efficiently with having stop and start something. I get a call. I just literally pause what I'm doing and go to the next section if I want. Now, what happens? If I am in the operation screen here and, and so on, I can click on this button on my tab and pop it out. I can undock it from my Enterprise web. Now, you guys can see this part on my screen, but I could move it to another screen if I want. And guess what? When I log back in, it's going to remember exactly where it was, right? So the cool part is I can undock and move it over. And then I can add another tab and another tab. And I could make those pop up also if I ever wanted to. I'll bring back my tab. Now, you think that's enough, Rob and John? Should we do more on the tabs? Or is that too much? No, I think that's good. No, we're going to do one more thing on the tabs. What happens if I click on this little button here? It's like a little square with a little line. I can take my tab and I can split it. Now I have two sub tabs in my tab and I can put my events. I'll do it again. If I click on it again, it will, it will swap it. So now for troubleshooting, look at this. You obviously need a better screen, like a nice screen like, like mine here. You can have your events at the bottom and you can have your doors on top. And if I click on the one, nothing happens. But if I right click on it, I can unlock the door, for example. And within a few seconds, the event appears up here. See? If I can lock the door, I lock it. Now I'm going to do a door first open. The door shows red. And then I'm going to get a door first open on the screen within about two seconds. If there's a five second refresh uh, in there, all right? So the cool part is I can have a multiple tabs opened separately on different screens, and each tab can be divided into two. So my, my workspace experience that I get to use a system with is customized to the way I need it to be, right? So it's very practical. Now, if I'm tired of this, I could always dock it back. And so before I dock it back, if I make it full screen, notice that I don't have any more menus. It takes all the page just for me. And then I can hit the little arrow up here that people don't notice. And it could bring up the menu 
for this tab. So I can customize the tab as I wish. So one of the benefits here is, and once you get used to the tabs, you can start working with everything if you ever want it here. Once I'm done, I could always bring it back with a little square and the arrow here, and it will bring it back to my list of tabs, something that no browser can actually do, by the way, on the internet. So it's all here. Once I'm done, I can always hit the log out button if I ever wanted to. And that will log me out of my system. All right. So these are just a few of the things that the Enterprise Web can do. It can do a lot more. Uh, but I want to give you a little feel on how the Enterprise Web worked and how the system worked. All right. From card holders uh, to reports to unlocking a door. Uh, and, and the action scheduler, uh, and so on, right? A very powerful tool. So if you guys want, uh, uh, next week, we are doing another Cantic webinar series on the Cantic controller, how to hook up a controller into the Hattrix platform. Uh, I'll be doing it from the web so you guys can see it. So if I'm using Hattrix, all I have is this, which is my web interface. No more workstation for the day-to-day -day stuff, right? So with that, I'll show you how to program a controller from the web. So hope to see you guys next week. While I prepare the questions, please write them down in the chat, and we'll get back to you guys in a second. Thanks for attending the webinar series.